Welcome to Compound Makeover Night Edition. I am going to begin by installing some solar lights on the side of my trees. Will it work? Maybe. We're going to find out. Also, everyone's in town. We're all driving E36s together. But compound improvements? That's what we're doing first. I want to have a beautiful night experience. Lights, festivities, fountains. Wait till you see these things glow. It's going to be great. Up here, found a nice tree. Uncle Mountain right there. Should light up the... Oh, hey, Tristan! Oh, hey! Dialing in lights on the building right now. It's going to look so good. Look at this place. So beautiful. Oh, it looks great, bud. Looks great. All right, we're going to get a little bit of an angle on this. Don't know how bright this is going to be. We're going to find out. That's a problem. I'm going to need some washers for this. Matt, what do you think about me putting up solar lights on the side of my tree? Yeah, it's either going to work great or terribly. We're going to find out. Yeah, I think they're 1200 watts, something like that. All right. This is either the best or the worst idea. Can't decide. There's no downside, except for wasting money. And me thinking about this after the sun already went down. All right. We'll do a, a quick little check with Trev. Trev, what kind of E36 you got here? Uh, 99328IS. Oh, so you got a ZF and a big diff. Flexing on us. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, we got that. It came It came with some BC coilovers on it. It had some wheel spacers, these E90 wheels. Um, I traded you a taco for that bride seat right there. It's got M3 bumpers, side skirts, balling on us. I know, black interior. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm uh, ready to part it out and get some of my money back. Uh, we got a CNC 71 kit. Like, mostly installed just doing tie rod ends. Yeah, and you're moving fast. And then we have a bunch of PMC stuff. The nice thing, the thing that I loved is everything was in stock over Drift HQ. Oh like my I, God, shush, I, I, shush. I came, I came over here and I was just like, man, I, like, do I need to order coilovers or I need to order some of this other stuff? Everything was just like over there on the shelf. Look, we, we pride ourselves in the stock. That is our point of differentiation. That was not an intentional ad. Trevor's just trying to be too much of a homie. Uh, I haven't touched this thing since the last video. I've got some other tires and some spin stuff I want to try, but I've been cleaning this thing up because before we all start crashing into each other, I want to get some photos of it looking as good as it looks right now, and it does look really good. So I'm gonna throw the other wheels on it, get some photos, and then start the destruction. Hey, Ethan. What up, dude? He's loading up another solar light that just came in. I'm lining up another tree. We got tree, 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 and maybe tree over there, but I'm on one bar on this thing, so. Running out of juice. Sorry for the interruption, but I wanted to let you know that today's video is brought to you by Displate. Now, what is a Displate, you might ask? Displate is a one-of-a-kind metal poster. You might have seen them in my videos before. What you got here is a 21st century canvas mounted by magnets. It's sturdy, it's beautiful, and it's made to last a lifetime of intense staring. We've got the side of an ugly fridge here. We're gonna spice it up a little. Now, if we were doing this on your wall, we have a protective leaf that you would just peel off, stick on in place before your magnet. Since we're doing it on the side of the fridge, we just clean the area, stick on the magnet, and boom you can fine-tune in your placement get it exactly how you like do you have commitment issues when it comes to mounting things on your wall are you worried about them being crooked no holes here pal and if you're like me and you can't make a decision it's extremely easy to swap out your disc plate for another one disc plates make fantastic gifts just in time for the holidays check it out here's some ideas for you some of these are gifts so don't share them with my family you might be able to guess who's for who but here's some ideas of the vast variety you could find with over 40,000 artists and over a million designs to choose from. And not only is ordering a display going to be supporting my channel, when you use my discount code in the description, your display is going to be even cheaper using my link. I'm going to give a massive thank you to Display for sponsoring this video, and I'm excited to see what you guys pick up. Grant! Hi, Adam! What do you think about my pond lights? I love that. I'm so hyped. It's such a vibe. I love it. Look at how sick this looks. We got the little archway. We got the building all lit up. We got inflatable snowmen, hey, but check Dad, this out, check this out. To drive till at night? Uh, not too late because of neighbors and stuff, but yo, Midnight. ready? On. Oh! Look at that, dude. That's, that's pretty good. Impressive. For solar that's powered? North For solar power. <laughs> so I was torn because I can mount them higher, but I was like, either I have a big spread or I have it really bright in one area. And in my mind, this tree's the outer clip that's yeah. like the danger area. So I, I just- think it has a, a good enough spread here will where it'll just give you you know drifting you're not yeah. really paying attention to where you are anyway so this will give you an idea of where you are on the track anyway the you track. don't really need to see yeah it's the track this is our track for the week so they are motion sensing um but because they only charge for two hours today i'm just going to turn them on when we start driving but i got 
four along this line, basically oh, lighting up this whole back edge. So good, dude. I'm so excited. Love it. Yep. All right, go to finish my car. All right, have fun. The boys over at Podium One were kind enough to let me take back one of their demo rigs from PRI. So it is going to be living in our shop until we have our toy drive this weekend on Saturday at the Oviedo Mall. We're gonna have this there, running demos, the homie Matt, the Sim legend, AKA Sim expert, AKA. Hustler, yeah, yeah. Oh, booty hustler? Yeah, bro, booty hustler 69, get it right, come on. Is that actually your? I swear to God, I can't make this up. All right, add him on, add him on Aceto. But uh, we're just gonna mount the screens. The cool thing is this literally comes all set up, so uh, it was very, very easy, and this will be the most ridiculous sim to ever live on the compound, so we can all enjoy it before the event. All right, I'm gonna go do a quick test lap. It's dark, and this thing doesn't have headlights, so it's not ideal. Look how funny it looks compared to Trevor's E36. Looks so tiny. I have not been able to resist the urge to wrench on this thing and try to make it better. I do want to add, I know that there's probably guys that have really good setups for these cars. However, this car seems like it was kind of abused in a field by someone that was just replacing things. Things were broken. The setup was definitely not set up for a dirt track. I don't know what it was set up for, but things were all over the place. I'm kind of trying to square up the car, which I don't know, maybe some of the dirt track guys won't like, but we just put street tires in the car to see if it works a little bit better for sliding around. The biggest change I made though, I flipped the shocks upside down. So instead of hitting the tie rods on the spring, I've got a little bit more clearance here. I slid the tie rods back, which will give it a little bit quicker steering ratio. And then I lengthen the tension rod and move the shock top back, which should give it a little bit more caster. So hopefully it has a little bit more self steer. You have to really wheel this thing. I can't wait. I can't you wait have, for it. You gotta you drive it. You have to let me drive this. Oh, 100%. I will dream come true. Not tonight, not tonight, no, but no. later. I don't wanna drive it tonight anyway. I gotta finish my E36. Getting done at Drift HQ, help me out. My hands look like this, so yours can look like that, Adam. To be fair, I've gone through 18 sets of gloves today. Probably the dirtiest my hands have looked in a long time. <laughs> I love it, thanks for having me. Of course. And this is still the same video that you guys have already, seen. well, this is the video that was uploaded two days ago. I just continued it in the evening because um, I want to keep it on this thing. Have you checked fuel today? We filled it up. There's no way I used the full tank, right? I mean, it, oh. how big is the tank? Oh. It sounds like it's out of fuel. Fox. 
rock it. Yeah, every time. Crazy. I'm mad I didn't buy one first. That's what I want to say. I don't know if you guys can tell in video, but literal night and day difference. The angle helped, the tires helped a lot. Way more confidence inspiring. Sketchy at night though, so I'm gonna save it for the daytime, but whew, I think I'm onto something. I really do. And we got Matt Mormon over here on the Podium One Sim. They got motion working. This thing is ridiculous. Pressure's on, Maddie. It's so cool. All right, so you guys might remember Ogan, who I got the two E36s from. What's up, dude? How's it going? Thanks for coming out to the compound. For sure, for sure. So we're talking because he's working on a little rap project for me that is kind of behind the scenes. I'll share it with you guys probably in a week or two. It's kind of ironic though that you come the week when all the homies are in town and everyone brought the E36s that were inspired by that little stinky E36 I got from you. Yeah, I know. I know. I can't wait to see it actually. It's right behind the door. You ready? Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to. I want to see what you think. <laughs> I, you know, I still got the title, right? No. Oh, you do? Okay. Wait, do you actually? No, no. I was gonna say, let me get that. This is sick. It's come a long way. It has. It has. The inside still is gross, but the outside looks really nice now. Yeah. I remember dri well, us driving with no windshield. Oh, yeah, we got that change. Yeah, inside's pretty much the same. <laughs> no, it's dope. It's dope. I like it. She's come a long way, old girl. It has. I might take the wheels off and go. <laughs> okay, and I know you like the transformation on this one, but I gotta show you the green one now. Green one? Yeah, remember? Yes, yes, yes. This one's come a, a little... I feel like I'm, I'm like doing like a car reveal right now, but it's still my car. <laughs> You're not getting car, it back. You're doing a reveal on me. Yeah, you better not have the title on this one. Oh, man. She's come a long way. Yeah. yeah. Yohan's been putting in work. Already more progress than you've seen in videos. It's going along amazing. Right, right, exactly. Um, good, a few spots. Yeah, the there major. was one corner here that we had to replace, but other than that, it was pretty clean. I mean, the guy I got it from, he, he did say the car came from Canada, so it was like... Wow, I'm surprised that they have more, more resin. Yeah, there. you're not wrong. I do remember I had the kilometer cluster in it, so that makes sense. Oh, this is sick. What's the plans for this? This is going to be a competition car that's going to make its way from your driveway all the way to Europe. <laughs> oh, that's sick. That's sick. It's cool. It's the next day and I've come to some revelations that I think are going to make this thing drift even better than it already does. One of which obviously is adding a handbrake, but it took a little thinking to figure out how I wanted to accomplish this. So this is the Drift HQ handbrake and I want to put it somewhere like here just so it's at a good point for the wheel. However, this is just really thin aluminum. So what I'm going to do is use a pretty thick sheet of metal that will tie into this bar and the upright that is down right here. That way it has a little more structure so it doesn't flex. Technically we could weld in a support base underneath, but I'm trying to do everything as bolt on as I can. That way if this does become a market, it's something that's easily replicable that we could sell for cheap. I love my tool bench on top of the car. I guess I found out this is for stacking them when they're stored. That's pretty neat. I thought it was just for tools. They literally stack these things on top of each other? Yeah. That so makes sense. This hey, ne next year the compound. I know. Just It'd be pretty cool. So this is my uh, my little makeshift plate that I made out of cardboard. The idea is it's gonna go over the shifter hole like this. It's gonna follow this edge so I can tie it in here. And then on this end, it'll have a bend that will add structure. And then there's an upright it can tie into over here. So I'm gonna take this, go over to the fab area, pick a, a piece of thick metal, get that bend in there, then I mount it up. Yep. This stuff is probably way thicker than I need, but I want this to be as strong as possible so it doesn't flex. All right, big fancy thing. Show me how to use this, John. So you screw there, and there's an edge here. Uh huh. You pretty much start pumping. And then once you get close, you kind of get a better spot. Your line's a little it's red. Oh, you just do it by hand, and then it, this yeah. will do 90 degrees? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. So it's easy to go over 90. So. Okay, so just watch it? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's really easy. I like that. Well, like trans mounts and stuff like that, the yeah. heavier gauge material. Does it flex back at all or not really? Uh, it will have some spring back, yeah. Does that look like about 90? A uh, little bit. Probably like right there. Let's see, how'd I do? It's 
spring back a bit, but. Just a bit. Just yeah, go a little so bit more. Yeah, and just check it with this. Start drilling holes. Stainless made it a little bit more challenging, but look good. Sit right about like that. And then the handbrake, something like this. All right, time to drill holes. There's been an overwhelming amount of people that know infinitely more than I do about this thing and one of the comments that I saw was why don't you flip the lower control arms upside down. The limiting factor for angle is that when the tie rod turns it gets closer to the shock. Because of that I can't move the tie rod pickup closer which would effectively give us more angle because we would just hit the shock. But if we flip this upside down that's going to change this pickup point for the shock up here which should give us a lot more clearance and all we should have to do is basically take the lower control arm off flip it upside down and put it on that side. So I'm gonna try that, see if it works. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. And that'll give us a lot more angle. Yeah. So we take this off, and then we should be able to effectively flip it. While it's off, I'm going to extend the lower bunch just to get a little bit more camber. I can't really shorten the uppers anymore, so this should do the trick. Got all this extra real estate now, and if we need even more clearance, I could probably shave this down and move the shock even farther back. So, looking pretty good. Get everything tightened up, and then uh, finish the handbrake lines, and then go test. I do want to add also, the reason why I'm working on this now of all times, pretty much everyone is still finishing their E36s, and I luckily have mine already done, but rather than going out and driving with one person or by myself, it's way more fun to just be in the shop, hanging out, wrenching with the boys. Okay. Now that it's reversed, we have plenty of clearance. I could stick a whole finger in there. The plan now is you can essentially slot this hole more than it already is to move the tie rod closer. In an ideal world, we would drill a new hole, but I think it's gonna be too close or I'd be better off just slotting it. Rough alignment setup, uh, I compressed it just to see if we have any clearance issues. It isn't hitting the shock, but it's still kind of close. So what I'm gonna do is shave that down and move the shock in closer, but I'm gonna have to space the shock out up top so it doesn't contact this arm. That's so scary with you. Bro. There's, I might, I could have just lit this thing on fire. There's fuel in the frame rail. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's fuel? Dude, there's legitimate fuel in the frame rail. What? Why is there fuel in there? What in the Yeah. What's going on? That could have been really bad. Imagine the frame is like a bomb. Did what? you hit a line or something? Oh, sh did I? Okay, so it's a rubber fuel oh, line. Oh, yeah. It's a rubber line. It runs through the box frame. No. Yep. Hey, it's fine. It's a re It's a standard fuel line. Oh, my Look at it. God. It's right here. See? This is my intro to the car right here. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm so upset now. Uh, it's fine. No, well, it's not. It's, I it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not fine. Fuel it's line. standard fuel line. I can smell it, dude. We just gotta yank yeah. it out now and just well, route just, it differently. Now, like, can I even run a bolt through it? How big is the line? Oh. Oh, you're upset because you can't. Well, that too. We just cut the line, pull it through here, pull it through there, and then route a new line. Adam, look right here. They're hard lines. This, so no. This is the line right there. Is oh this yeah. It here, Adam? You can see a really yeah. good angle right there. Really? Can you see? It's just that. This little guy? No, the top, one, top, one on the top. The bigger one. This. Oh, thick, this guy. This thick boy. So you just well, snip big. it. I don't think the bolt's gonna be able to fit through with that. Actually. If not, I mean, there's a ton of wiring running underneath that with zip ties, so I think you're good. Run it underneath there. That's less sketchy than a bolt through it. it I mean, the car is also kind of sketch, but that's, oh, that's besides the point. Thing. Yeah. I'm real sad about that, I think. <laughs> mm hmm. I feel so dumb. No. 
I mean, I would have never assumed there was a fuel line running through that either, so. I'm glad I didn't self-tapper it, because then I, I would have, if I did that, then I would have had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. This is taking much longer than I wanted it to take, because I want to have a rigid handbrake. I wanted to avoid welding. Welding would have made this a lot simpler. Although I probably would have welded right where the fuel was, and then that would have not been good. Yeah, that would have actually caught fire. You're doing great. I went way too overkill with this. This is going to be the most rigid handbrake out of any car that I own. Is it going to need it? No. Ethan's been helping me drill holes and stuff because this stainless is kicking my ass. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. something on the other side of the hole. You know it is. It's okay. uh, Yeah, it's the bracket. And more fuel. Donnie, the bleed hey, master. What's going on here? We never handbrake on the compound today. Yeah. So the wrench? Yeah. Yep. Right there. Finish one, on to the next. Not even done one, on to the next. <laughs> Angie. Yeah, sometimes doing stuff bolt-on is harder than welding. So if you're young and you still have the ability to learn, I suggest learning how to weld sooner than later. Yeah. How do you got the new merch and I don't even have it? You told me to grab a shirt when you ruined my other one. <laughs> Good choice. Coming soon. You can see on the leading wheel, this is about the maximum angle that we can have. The problem is because of where the pickup is, the trailing wheel isn't getting as much as it could. I'm kind of cheating it still with toe out a little bit because the rack is limited. I can't put a rack spacer on it. Um, so right now I'm gonna drive it like this because the front's aired up so much, it will be a little bit less noticeable, but the key would be to move this tie rod even closer to the knuckle. Now we have way more clearance with the shock, so I have no concerns about that. And we'll just drive it with a lot of toe in, or a lot of toe out, and the handbrake now.
Is it exciting? It yes. Does it drift well? I don't know if I would say well. Is it exciting? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you already said that. Is it dangerous? Yes. Is this probably the sketchiest thing that's happening right now and might ever happen? Yes. Dude. Is it, are Dude. those welds safe? <laughs> probably not. Do I, have more, do I have more bruises on my elbow than cat scratches on my arms? No. <laughs> Cats are more dangerous. Truth. Look. Handbrake works great. The problem is that I can't counter steer with one hand. Get your muscles up, skinny boy. Bro, listen. <laughs> if I drive another handbrake, it's cake. With the handbrake, I can't it counter steer. It works good though. Skinny boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna drive the E36 because it'll be way less, way more chill. This is like, this is like probably more intense than FD. I think. <laughs> I really do. You look good in there. Bro. Thanks, dude. Dude. The adrenaline rush. It looks like a workout too. Yeah, the, the this needs some some foam noodles for sure. I don't even know how to put it into words how ridiculous this thing is. I'm gonna have a relaxing night driving my E36 now. If you can, Mike, can you actually just make a quick little montage for them of the E36? Because it's probably gonna look total the next time they see it in a video. Sure. I wasn't planning to go heavy in the filming tonight. I just kind of want a door with my bros, you know? <laughs> just just trade good, a little paint. Just a good bro door sesh. I need like five minutes to cool down from that. One of the questions we seeked, to, we sought to ask, sought to answer, was, is, to, oh, was it, is it reliable? This doesn't have anything to do with reliable. This is more consumables. I predicted that the consumables would be low. Haven't used much fuel. All the drifting I've done on this so far, the tires still look brand new. <laughs> it's so light that it just doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Weight is your best friend. You guys know from, by now, if you've watched enough of my videos, there, there are cars and there are experiences sometimes where I literally, my brain just goes to mush and I can't comprehend. That either means that I had the best time of my life or I was on the edge of a cliff the entire time. <laughs> and I'm coming down from an intense adrenaline rush. It's the ladder right now. <laughs> Step ladder, bro. <laughs> an absolute first for me. I didn't even realize what happened at first because it looked like the tire got shredded in half. I just started driving, it, like there's not enough laps to justify this tire exploding. I actually was rubbing so much on the inside of the fender that it cut a hole in the sidewall. I want to look at the other side. I bet that slowed me down a lot because the car felt way slower than normal too. Yeah, it's like wearing through the sidewall. That's crazy. So what's the easiest thing? Dude, should I raise it or just roll it probably? Just roll it. Wow, that's insane. This is the coolest thing ever. You having yeah, a good time? Yeah, this is fantastic. Hell yeah. This man. Just, uh, I, you know, everyone, like-minded cars, like-minded mindset, just uh, here to party, have a good time. No one's crashed yet. So that's, you know, that's a good thing, right? You know what's really cool for me to see? You, your first time, well, is this your first time in an E36, technically? Uh, not my first time in an E36. Yeah. I, first time in this car, in let's this say. this car, yes. Sam's first time in an E36, you two tandeming, like you've been driving these things for years. These cars are phenomenal. <laughs> like, we put the CNC 71 kit on it and it just drives itself. It's ridiculous how simple these cars are. Um, I always try to do a simple car and I get carried away, but with how easy this car was, a diff, angle kit, and a handbrake, and you could go all day, especially at a place like this. How do you like driving on the compound? This is sick, man. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Hell yeah. Thanks for having us. Dude, out. thank you for coming out. Yeah, this is fantastic. Now that you're in Georgia, you gotta come out more often. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm only seven hours away now. Let's it's not bad. Out. Yeah, let's go. Hell yeah, let's you turn want, some laps. You wanna run some? Let's do it.
a cool thing we just realized. The um, the acrylic paint on this got all wild from the heat of the engine, and it has pattern. this crazy pattern in it. Dude, take a photo of it, send it to the graphic designer. It looks sick right here. Yeah. yeah. I, I hated this spot before, but now it looks sick. Yeah, that looks really cool. It's like a maze. Yeah. That's so I love cool. That. Well, what do we got here? Oh, some nuggets. 150 nuggets. All right. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. Yes, sir. I want everyone to drive this thing, but there are a couple things I want to do to make it drive a little bit better just because I'm still not fully satisfied and I think it could be a lot better than it is. One of which Grant's going to assist me with is cleaning the carbs to get the mid-range a little bit crispier. Assist might be a, a stretch. Direct. I'll show you what to do. All right. no. <laughs> Direct, he said. Give me a Phillips head. Let's get to work. Other right. thing I'm going to do, I want to shorten the knuckles a little bit more. Right now I'm just having to cheat it a lot with a lot of toe out and I think that's making it feel weird. And then I'm going to cut this arm here to shorten it and give some more caster, which should make the self-steering a little bit better because right now there's virtually none. Do you think it could be with the six inch long steering rack? Could, could that be your issue? What do, what do you mean? It's got no movement. Well, yeah, I mean, that doesn't help, but I can make it better. Yeah, no, you could definitely make it better. All right, let's go. All right, that's cool. It just comes off as one unit. You want me to loosen those clamps a little more? No. How's she look? I mean, the inside of the carb looks fine, but we want to check the... The bowls? The bowls are on the bottom. Uh -huh. That's There's a flow inside. The flow goes up and down. That's what allows fuel from the tank to go into the carbs. And then, I don't know what's up here on these carburetors. Usually they're diaphragms, like to pulse, but I don't think that's what's here. So we'll pull the bottoms off and see how dirty they are. That's where all the fuel sits. Fuel's crappy, so it'll get yeah. junky in there. So we'll pop these off. We'll take a look and see what's going on. How are we looking, Grant? Um, this one has, I don't know what it's called when fuel breaks down. Do you know what that name is? Like gunk? So like- It's from the ethanol in fuel. It's, <laughs> it's It's garbage. So this has garbage. We'll pull the main, these are the main jets right here. So wide open throttle, etc. This is what allows all the fuel into the engine. So we'll pop these out, spray them with brake clean. Wide open, it actually feels pretty good. And it's then the, like the mid range is just- So maybe. mid is going to be pilot jet. So that'll be down deep in here. Uh, so we'll pull all those out. We'll pull all the mains and the pilots out. We'll clean them with uh, brake clean and then we'll throw them back in. Clean all the gunk out of the bowls and should be a little bit better. I'm not going to say it's going to solve it, but- It can't get worse, right? Everything can always get worse, Adam. <laughs> it's a great way to look at life. Yep. Rolling. All right, so like I said, these are the main jets. This one looks disgusting, so things would be pretty tight, Adam. This would be the, like that would make it lean out, right? The gunk? 100%, yeah, because it's not allowing as, you know, as much fuel, so. Ooh. Look, at, look at all that junk there. So this should be, Adam, do you see how the inside of that has like gunk in it? Yeah. That's what's gonna cause the issue. Um, but let's just make sure, so these are nozzle sizes, like nitrous. Mm -hmm. So could um, you just throw those nozzles in the ultrasonic cleaner? Yeah, that's cleaner? what we'll do. And we'll clean them out with brake clean. You can okay. pull this thing out too, right? Um, no, that's a seat. But just keep, do not mess, mess these up. Like get the order out? Yeah. These are 120s. All of them? Well, I, that's what I'm curious about. They should all be the same, but yeah, they're all 120. Where did that come from? Let's just come over here. Okay. <laughs> Organizations. <laughs> Who gave him the screwdriver? I don't know. <laughs> <right>. Sonic. <laughs> yeah, how do we do the mid-range jets? Uh, so the pilot jets, we need a tiny long flathead. Oh, Grant, you'd be a good dad. Look at you teaching us both carburetor things. I am. To adjust his air this conditioning for every time he stays over. <laughs> okay. Now you just gotta fix the plumbing. I know. <laughs> well, I'm I'm Rambo when I work on stuff, but carburetors, I'm like surgeon because I don't want to mess anything up. Max Shorten for Max Camber. Now I'm going to cut the uh, the tension rod which will effectively give us a, a buttload of caster and I'm going to shorten that all the way so we'll have hella camber, hella caster. So you can drive like crap or drive great. Let's find out. Looks good to me. <laughs> this is my, my elbow padding protection. Let's hear how the, uh, the cleanup job did. Yeah. <laughs> All right, new angle mods. This is gonna be the last test of this video to see if it feels better with more caster and a slightly shorter knuckle.
did the trick yeah it almost drives itself now <laughs> so just so you know like I literally if, if you happen to have one of these I chopped about this much off the uh, caster arm up top moving that back now when I handbrake or I throw the car it'll actually self steer I mean I guess it could be part of the camber playing a role into it too because the caster should want to straighten the wheel but I think that gives it the natural flick and then the uh, oh man it just like it feels way more natural now that's sick yeah good time Still sketchy, but like, I feel way more at home. And I think now, having some padding in here, I could still use a little bit more, but helps a lot. <laughs> is, is, is that a motorcycle engine in there, boy? Yeah, 1200cc Yamaha right there. Something else, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Pat probably knows more about these things than I do. What do you think? Do you like it? Yeah, it's pretty wild. It is the most ridiculous thing I've ever drifted in my life. Did you have to change like a bunch of stuff to make it drift right? Oh, uh, not a whole lot. Just a lot of cutting and drilling holes. You should drive it. Yeah. It is ridiculous. It feels real fast, probably. Yes, yeah. insane. It drives so good now. I click third, and it's like. You still feel like you're on the edge of the seat and you're gonna die, but like you're in control of your own death now. Hmm. Before it had no caster, so the wheel would just get stuck. Now it like self steers. There's obviously still more that can be done on this, but I would say now it went from being a nine out of 10 hard to drive down to like a seven out of 10. So still exciting, but I feel in control now and I feel like I can do things with it. Um, maybe I'll try driving with some other cars so we can really get a scale of how fast it is to answer the question, is it competitive? But overall, I'm still very happy with my purchase. A little bit more work than I anticipated off the rip to get it uh, running. Um, but if there's anything specific you want to see with this thing, let me know. I'll be reading the comments. And I'm stoked you guys are as stoked on this thing as I am. What's your thoughts on the grant? You say it's too fast.